Welcome back. All right, 11 games tonight in the National Hockey League. Um, some some playoff seedings and all of that changing day by day by day. And we're going to start off with uh, two of the top teams in the National Hockey League, the New York Rangers and the Boston Bruins. The Rangers came out quite the statement with today's game. So uh, it's Quick versus Swayman in this one. There's an early power play for the Rangers. Fox has a chance to deflects out. There was a shorthand or rush chance by Zaka. That's held. Boston kills off that power play, but five shots for the Rangers on that power play. It was the only power play they had in the game. Uh, shots are 7-2 to two Rangers at five and a half minutes. We get a power play for Boston. That's killed off. The Rangers have a two-on-one that's broken up, and then DeBrusque buries one on a rush. He scores from Frederick and Brazo at 8.04. Uh, Bruins press for another. The, Bruins, or the Rangers get some pressure with seven and a half minutes left. There's a power play for Boston. That's killed off. And the Rangers press in the final minute. So it's one nothing Boston after one. Second period, both teams have early chances. Coyle misses one wide on a wraparound. Shots are one apiece at four minutes. Lafreniere to Trocek gets blocked. Bruins press at seven minutes. At 7.58, Panarin scores from Schneider and Lafreniere. Ties the game. And then the Rangers press at the half looking for the lead. There's more pressure by the Rangers uh, with seven minutes left. In fact, the Bruins get pinned down a bit. So Swayman has to hold the puck so they can get a line change in. 2.56 left. The Boston Bruins get a power play. Uh, that's killed off. And then there's a turnover in the Boston Bruins' own zone. And Panarin puts one in off Jake DeBrusque at 19.25. The Rangers have their first lead of the game at 2-1. Then there's a post for Panarin on the next shift. So he wanted that hat trick to be the natural variety. So we go to the third period. Again, 2-1 Rangers. Uh, early press for Boston at 3.17. Brazo buries a loose puck that's behind quick. Marshawn and Boquist with the assist there but the Rangers answer 40 seconds later. Fox wires one from a sharp angle. Gustafson and Zibanejad with the assists at 3.57. Uh, shots are five to three for the Rangers at seven and a half minutes. Rangers doing a really good job of blocking a path to the net. Uh, the Bruins would press with three and a half minutes left. Eventually they pull the goalie and Zibanejad scores from Kreider into the empty net at 17.57. So the Bruins pull the goalie again down by two. And at 19.08, Panarin hits the empty net for the hat trick. Fox with the assist. That is the 41st goal of the season for Panarin. It is his first 40-goal season. So, final score, 5-2 to two for the Rangers. They go to 46-20-4 with the win. With the loss, Boston 41-15-15. Shots on net, 14-9 Boston in the first, 13-6 Rangers in the second, 9-6 Rangers in the third. Final shots, 31-26 New York. Power plays, the Rangers go 0 for 1, Boston goes 0 for 3. The hits were 38 apiece. Jonathan Quick, good game for him, 24 saves on 26 shots. Swayman, I thought, was good to, uh, good as well, uh, 26 saves on 29 shots. But again, big win for the Rangers because they know Carolina is right there behind them. Carolina was at home against Philadelphia tonight. Arison versus Anderson in this one, early jump for the Canes, but the shots are 3 apiece, 3 minutes in. Flyers score, but there's an offside challenge, so yep, that comes off the board. Pressed by Philly at nine minutes. Canes aren't giving them a path to the net at this point. We get a power play for Carolina. That's killed off. The Flyers get a power play. That becomes a minute and 26 sec or 20 seconds of five on three. Uh, there's a post for Tippett. Everything's killed off, so that power play sucks. It's Philadelphia. Uh, it's 0-0 after one. Second period, there's an early power play for the Canes. That's killed off at 356. The Canes score. It's Martinook from Natchez and Pesci. But the Flyers answer at 421. Lawton buries one on a rush. Farabee and Brink with the assists. Shots are 5-3 to three for the Flyers at 7.5 minutes, but Carolina would get the lead back. Uh, Chatfield wires one top corner on a rush from Ajo and Orlov at 10.43. Shots are 11-7 to seven for Carolina with 5 minutes left, showing that the, the uh, momentum the Flyers had earlier in the period had shifted towards Carolina. There's a net feed to Natchez, near miss there. The Canes press are kept to the, kept to the outside. Kokanyemi has a chance that's caught and held. It's 2-1 Carolina after two. Third period. Shots are 6-4 for Philadelphia at four minutes, so they're getting chances. Flyers press at five minutes. Things get punchy on a hold by Anderson. Uh, there's a power play for the Flyers that results out of that. It sucks. It doesn't get anything. Flyers have a brief press after it ends. Then at 10-16, the Flyers tie it up. It's Konechny from Frost and Tippett. He jams it in from behind the net. Well done. Uh, Brink then fires one wide on a rush. The shots are 12 to 7 for Philly with four and a half minutes left. The Flyers press with two and a half minutes left and uh, they force the overtime. 2 2 tie. Uh, Canes control early in the overtime. Ajo has a rush chance that saved Gensel's tonight on a two on one rush. On the next two on one rush, they score. It's Jarvis from Burns at 128. 
Carolina wins in overtime 3-2. to two. They go to 44-20-6. and six. Very important point for Philadelphia. They have to be happy they got a point in Carolina. They're 35-26-9 and nine on the season. Shots on net 9-8 Carolina in the first. 14-8 Carolina in the second. 16-7 Philly in the third. All three shots for Carolina in the overtime, including the winner. Final shots 33-32 for Carolina. Power plays Philadelphia 0-3. for 3. Carolina 0-2. for 2. The hit 17-15 Philadelphia. Uh, Arison saves 30 out of 33. Anderson saves 30 out of 32. So both goalies, good nights for them. All right, next up. Uh, the Islanders and the Detroit Red Wings. So we had Sorokin versus Reimer. Uh, remember a couple weeks ago, the Islanders looked like they were just cruising into a playoff spot? Things have changed. Remember a couple weeks ago when it looked like, well, even not even a week ago, when it looked like Detroit was completely falling out and they were done? Things have changed. Larkin was back tonight too. So uh, early press by the Islanders. Fisher takes a puck to the ear. He's okay though. Shots are one apiece at three and a half minutes. Wings press at five and a half minutes. The Islanders then get some pressure eight minutes into the period. We get a power play for the Islanders. That's killed off. Wings get a power play. Fabry has a one-timer. That's held. Things get pushy. Power play is killed off. Shots are nine to five for the Islanders with five minutes left. Horvat misses an open net. The puck gets cleared after that. No idea how Horvat missed it there. That would have been his 30th, but it's 0-0 after one. Second period, Wings press at three and a half minutes. Shots are four to three for Detroit seven minutes in. We get a power play for the Islanders. Horvat has a one-timer that's saved. That power play is killed off. Wings press. They can't get to the net until Fisher, who's been red hot lately scoring-wise, opens the scoring in this one. Rasmus, Rasmussen with the assist at 11.15. Wings then look for another, but Riley would get one. Uh, five hole from the point. That's one that Reimer would want back. Uh, McLean and Bortuzzo with the assist at 13.25. We've got a 1-1 tie. Horvat has a rush that draws a power play. Things get punchy on a Reimer hold. That power play ends up being killed off. At 16 minutes, Detroit gets the lead back. It's Andrew Kopp scoring from Fisher and Sherratt. And then at 18.08, Larkin wires one from the slot. Uh, Debrinkit with the assist. It's 3-1 for Detroit after two. Third period. Raymond has a rush chance this block. The Islanders press at three and a half minutes. At 5.12, the Wings extend their lead. It's Kopp. From Rasmussen and Fisher, he buries a rebound on a rush. Barzell has a rush chance that's held, and then at 6.22, it's a rush again. Nice pass by Debrinkit to set it up. Kane gets the goal from Debrinkit and Goss to spare. We then get a power play for the Islanders. To their credit, they score on it. Uh, it's Pajot from Pollock and Engvall at 9.34. He buries a loose puck that was behind Reimer. And then at 11.20, to make the game a little bit closer, Barzell scores from Pollock. So all of a sudden, we're looking at a game where is Detroit going to blow it? Uh, Kane has a net feed that's held. The goalie pull happens with a little over five and five and a half minutes left. Uh, but at 16.50, Larkin hits the empty net. Raymond with the assist. And with 121 left, the Wings get a power play. So that helps them win this one 6-3. to three. Detroit goes to 36-28-6. Huge win. Huge, huge two points there. For the Islanders, really tough loss here tonight. 29-25-15, and 15, and they lose to the team they're chasing, and they don't get a point in the effort. Shots on net, 9-7 Islanders in the first, 9 apiece in the second, 18-8 Islanders in the third. Final shots are 36-24 for the Isles. Power plays, the Islanders 1-4, for four, Detroit 0-2. for two. The hits, 24-16 for Detroit. Sorokin saves 18 out of 23. Reimer saved 33 out of 36. So, yeah, huge win for Detroit tonight. We'll see if they can, you know, get things going. All right, next up. Uh, New Jersey at home against Winnipeg. Now, New Jersey, of course, knowing what Detroit's done and all that, New Jersey has to keep pace. They have faint playoff hopes, but they're still technically alive. So it's Brassois versus Allen. The Devils press at two and a half minutes, but four minutes in, there's no shots on net. Uh, Jets press. They're kept to the outside. Heischer's denied on a fast break that he had. Uh, power play for the Jets. Pionk has a blast that deflects out. That power play's killed off. Jets, pr Jets press after it's done. Uh, the Devils then press with nine and a half minutes left. The shots are only four to three for New Jersey with eight minutes left in this. Pilat has a net drive that's blocked with 2.49 left. The Jets get a power play. That's killed off. So after the first period, 0-0, which was kind of a theme in these early games, minus that one. Uh, second period, Luke Hughes has a screenshot that saved. The shots are 4 nothing for the Devils at three minutes. Lazar to Jack Hughes, near miss there. And then we get a power play for the Devils, and they score on it. It's Jack Hughes from Heischer and Luke Hughes at 8.59. It took nine seconds for that power play to connect. Uh, Morrissey's denied on a two-on-one rush. Howla has a four-on-two chance that's blocked. Uh, Luke Hughes takes a big hit from Lowry, which the fans I don't think liked a lot because you don't want to see your star rookie getting knocked down like that, but it was a nice hit. 
Uh, Jets press with four minutes left at 16:47. Ehlers wires one on an end-to-end -end rush. Uh, Shifley and Demello with the assists. It's 1-1 after two. Third period. Uh, Ball has a slapper. That's blocked aside. Uh, we get a power play for the Devils. Bratz denied. He sure is not. Uh, he sure scores with three seconds left in the power play at 5:59. Meyer and Luke Hughes with the assists. Uh, that gives New Jersey their second lead of the game. They're up 2-1. to one. Uh, Jets press at seven minutes. We get a power play for Winnipeg. That's killed off. Then the Devils get a power play, and they score on it. It's Jack Hughes again. Uh, he scores from Meyer and Luke Hughes at 11.52. Things then get pushy on a hold by Jake Allen, who had another good game. Power play for the Jets. That's killed off. The Jets press during a six-on-five with three minutes left, but eventually the empty netter is got by the Devils. Uh, Meyer gets that from Howla and Heischer at 19-11, and New Jersey wins 4-1. They go to 34-32-4 with the win. With the loss, Winnipeg 44-19-5. Uh, they fail to pull themselves ahead of Colorado and Dallas with the result tonight. Shots on net, 6-5 New Jersey in the first, 23-9 New Jersey in the second, 12-5 New Jersey in the third. Final shots, 41-19 New Jersey, and yeah, where was this Devils team the rest of the year? Uh, power plays 0 for 4 for Winnipeg, 3 for 4 for New Jersey. The hits 10 to 9 for the Devils. Uh, Brassois saves 37 out of 40. Allen saves 18 out of 19. Now I need to change boards. All right, Blues and Sens. So the Blues, of course, trying to charge their way up and and get into a playoff spot. It's not going to be easy though. We'll we'll go through the games and you'll see that. But anyways, uh, it was Hofer versus Forsberg, and another fan base got to find out. Joel Hofer's a pretty good goaltender. Uh, so early Shen turnover chance is held. The Sens press at four minutes. Greg has a net drive that's held. The Sens press at five and a half minutes. In fact, the shots are four to two in their favor. Seven minutes in. Shen has a wrist shot that's held. And then Saad buries a rebound as St. Louis is pressing. Cairo and Kessel with the assists at 11.53. Uh, Chikrin's then denied and close. Hofer holds on there. Sens press with five and a half minutes left, but at 14.57, Pareko scores for St. Louis. Cairo and Saad with the assists. And then Hofer resumes his heroics with the two to nothing lead. 40.9 seconds left, the Blues get a power play, so they're up two nothing. They got a power play to start the third, and the Sens finish the kill to start the second. Sorry, second. Ottawa presses at two and a half minutes. The Blues press, are kept to the outside. And then Kastelik gets Ottawa on the board from Matthew Joseph at 434. Giroux then has a one-timer that deflects out as now the Sens are trying to tie it. Uh, Kelly fires one wide on a rush. We get a power play for the Sens. Batherson's tonight in close. That power play's killed off. Blues press with eight minutes left. Batherson has a tip shot that's held. And then Jake Neighbors scores at 1311. And then it looked like maybe he had scored again seconds later, but they, they review that and they decide, nope, not a goal. Uh, Sanderson's then denied. Hofer holds. 347 left. The Sens get a power play. That's killed off by Hofer. So it's 3-1 to one St. Louis after two. Third period. Early power play for the Sens. Pinto's denied. Kubalik is not. He scores from Pinto and Giroux at 158. St. Louis would answer, though. Kyrou scores from Torpchenko and Butchnevich at 543. The shots are 9-4 to four for Otto at seven minutes. It was just Hofer. It was the Hofer game. It's just great for him. Uh, power play for the Blues. That's killed off. Hayes is tonight after it ends. Eventually, Ottawa pulls the goalie, and that allows Jake Neighbors to get his second goal of the game at 1832 into the empty net. And St. Louis wins this one 5 to 2. They go to 37 30 and 3 with the loss. Ottawa 28 36 and 4 on the year. Shots on net 12 7 Ottawa in the first, 13 9 Ottawa in the second, 14 11 Ottawa in the third. They outshoot the, the Blues 39 to 27. Power plays St. Louis 0 for 2, Ottawa 1 for 3, hits 22 to 19 for St. Louis. Hofer saved 37 out of 39. He was absolutely fantastic. Forsberg saved 22 out of 26 at the other end. So again, great game for Hofer. Uh, he's going to have quite the highlight reel to look at at the end of the year, isn't he? Next up, <clears throat> Nashville and Florida. So Nashville's for real. Huh? And if you're a Florida fan, are you getting concerned at all? Like this is starting to look like a slide by the Florida Panthers. So it's Lankinen versus Bobrovsky. Things get pushed on a hold by Bobrovsky. The shots are two apiece, three and a half minutes in. We then had a fight between Cousins and Zucker. I've got Cousins spelt wrong there, but I know it's C-O-U-S-I-N-S. Um, of course, the other Cousins is over in this game, so it's understandable that 
that happens. Anyways, power play for Nashville. That's killed off. One shot. Uh, Bennett has a rush chance that's defended. O'Reilly's then denied on a rush of his own. Uh, we go a long stretch with no whistle and good back and forth play. Uh, Bennett has a rush chance that's saved. The shots are 9-4 to four Nashville with seven and a half minutes left. So, yeah, they'd really shut down Florida nicely at that point. Near miss by Forsberg from the slot. Nyquist to Forsberg. Another near miss. And then they just gave him too many chances. Nyquist scores from Forsberg at 17-47. Uh, 28 seconds left. The Panthers get a power play. So down one nothing after one. Florida needs goal. They do not get it early in the second period as Nashville finishes the kill. Uh, there's a press by Nashville three minutes in, but the shots are six to one. Florida four and a half minutes in. So Lankinen's earning his his pay tonight. Uh, Preds draw a power play and they score on it. Uh, Forsberg tips in a point shot. Barry and Yossi with the assists at 7:32. So Tyson Barry doing his job tonight and it makes it two nothing for Nashville. Things get pushed in a hole by Bobrovsky. There's a press by Nashville with nine and a half minutes left. Shots are 11 to seven for the Panthers with eight and a half minutes left. Montour has a, slot, has a shot that's held as the Panthers press. Zucker then had a turnover chance that's held. It's two nothing Nashville after two. And it's it, worthy of pointing out there were 30 shots in the second period. Only one hit the net. So both goalies were fantastic at that point. Third period, early Panthers power play. There's a near miss for Bennett. Power play's killed off. One shot on net. Panthers press after it's done. Barry has a slot shot that's blocked. Shots are 7-1 to one for Florida at four and a half minutes. So almost the same start as the second period. Just couldn't hit the net. And you could see the frustration starting to really boil up for the Florida Panthers. I, I feel bad for their next opponent. Uh, power play for Nashville. That's killed off. Preds really limiting chances after that slow start in the period. Uh, Panthers getting frustrated. It was really starting to show. Strong back checking by the Preds too. And then Forsberg has one that goes through Bobrovsky. Nyquist with the assist at 14-19. Then they tell the Sphere story again. You know, the, the Sphere story seems to get told a lot. We've all already heard it, so it's good. We we don't need to keep hearing the Sphere story. We, we know. All right, so Nashville wins 3-0. 21-25-4 is the record. Their, their point streak now at a team record 16. Games uh, for Florida, 45-20-4 with the regulation loss. Shots on net, 14-5 Nashville in the first, 16-14 Florida in the second, 12-9 Florida in the third. Final shots, 37-33 for the Preds. Power plays, Nashville 1 for 3, Florida 0 for 2. The hits, 37-29 Florida. Lankin and saved all 33 shots he faced for the shutout. Dusty Tony, the Tiger Magnet. And Bobrovsky, 34 saves on 37 shots at the other end. Uh, Bobrovsky was quite good. He just didn't get any goal support tonight. We've heard the Sphere story. We're good. We we don't have to keep hearing about the Sphere story. All right, next up, uh, Buffalo and the Edmonton Oilers. And you'll notice there's the No Mercy magnet here, uh, the 80s magnets on the next board. So, Lukanen versus Skinner, and a minute and 38 seconds in, uh, a puck takes a nice Buffalo bounce to Paterka. Paterka gets that goal from Tuck and Thompson. It's 1-0 Buffalo. Shots are 3-0 Sabres at 2.5 minutes. We get a near miss for Dreisaitl and a net drive. The Oilers press 5 minutes in. The Sabres press back 7.5 minutes into the period. Uh, we get a power play for Buffalo. That's killed off. Hyman's denied on a rush. Uh, the Oilers press with 8 minutes left. The Sabres score, but they're offside. So that goal comes off the board. Uh, Thompson's denied from the slot. Olofsson is not. Olofsson scores from Byram and Ruschek at 16:37, so it's 2-0 Buffalo. Things then get pushy on a hole by UPL. And then with 146 left, the Oilers get a power play, which was Buffalo's first mistake. Don't give them a power play. They score on it. Dreisaitl has one that trickles through UPL. Uh, Nugent Hopkins and Bouchard with the assists at 18:55. It's 2-1 Buffalo after one. Second period. Uh, the Oilers press at two and a half minutes. They had the only shot on net for either team four minutes in, and at 426, they score. It's a two on one rush. Ekholm buries it from McDavid and Bouchard. Uh, so that ties it up at two. We get a power play for Buffalo. That's killed off. Then there's a near miss for McLeod on a rush. Uh, the Oilers press at seven and a half minutes. The Sabres block. The Sabres get pinned down. The Oilers are really controlling the game at this point. The shots on net, to me, kind of defied what was really going on. The shots were 8-4 to four for the Sabres with six minutes left. And at 16.56, Paterka puts him back in the lead. Uh, Clifton with the assist. And then Olofsson fires one wide. The puck's cleared out. Uh, after that, the Oilers press. We're into the final minute. And Hyman would score from Ekholm and McDavid on a failed clear by Buffalo <clears throat> at 19 minutes and 12 seconds. So it's 3-3 three, three after two. Third period. Oh, not a good third period for the Buffalo Sabres. 
who came into this game thinking we've got to get a win, we've got to at least get a point, we've got to get something to keep our hopes alive for the playoffs. Well, we get a power play for the Oilers. That's killed off, but the shots are 4-1 to for the Oilers at 4.5 minutes. At 4.38, Darnell Nurse puts them in the lead from Stetcher, and that, that would be the start of what we ended up seeing. 5 minutes and 40 seconds in, Ekholm. Uh, he gets the second goal of the game. Dreisaitl and McDavid with the assist there. Oilers press with nine and a half minutes left. The Sabres draw a power play. That's killed off. The Oilers press with five and a half minutes left. And at 15-18, Hyman wires one from the slot. McDavid and Dreisaitl with the assists. And then they just pour it on. At 16-57, McLeod scores uh, to make it 7-3. to three. And at 19 minutes and 50 seconds, so with 10 seconds left in the game, Connor Brown with his second goal in, what, a week? About time he started getting goals. He gets that from Carrick and CeCe, makes your final score 8-3, to three, puts the no-mercy magnet on the board. Edmonton goes to 42-21-4 with the win. Buffalo 33-33-5 with the loss. Uh, shots on net 16-13 Edmonton in the first, 11-8 Buffalo in the second, 15-5 Edmonton in the third. Final shots are 39-29 for the Oilers. Power plays Buffalo 0-3, for three, Edmonton 1-2. for two. Hits 32-28 to 28 for Edmonton. Lukanen saves 31 out of 39. Just rough night for Lukanen. And Skinner saved 26 out of 29. The Oilers can light a goalie up, so I don't look at that and think, oh, Lukanen was terrible tonight. But you get the 80s magnet and the Cobra Kai magnet on the same game. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the 80s game. There is no 80s game on the other board. I lied. Now let's go to the other game and expose my lies. All right, Chicago and Anaheim. And, of course, the last time these teams met, there was, like, Bench clearing, well not bench clearing, but there was like brawls by today's standards. Tonight, nah. Uh, Soderblom versus Dostal in this one. Uh, the Ducks press at two and a half minutes. Bedard has a rush chance that's caught and held. The shots are netter, are netter two nothing Chicago four and a half minutes in. Things get pushy on a hold by Dostal. Uh, the Ducks press at nine minutes. There's a net feed to Carlson that gets picked off. Uh, the Hawks press with five and a half minutes left. The shots are nine to two for Chicago with five minutes left in the period. Power play for the Hawks, that's killed off. Uh, Chicago presses after it's done. Jones has a point shot that's saved. It's 0-0 after one, but a really strong first period for Chicago. Second period, shots are one apiece at three minutes, and then Kalorn scores at three minutes and 10 seconds. Lindstrom and Vakaninen, it was just one of those nights where as I'm putting up the shots, somebody scores. So yeah, Vakaninen with a helper at 3-10 on Kalorn's goal. Uh, we then get a power play for Anaheim. That's killed off. Jones has a net feed that's picked off. The shots are 6-1. to one. Ducks at 8 minutes. Uh, Strom to McTavish near miss. And then Leeson wires one on a rush from Myers at 9.34. They said that's Ben Myers' first NHL assist. That kind of surprises me. Uh, Ducks draw a power play. That's killed off. The Ducks press after it's done. Reichel has a shot that's blocked out as the Hawks press. We get two minutes of four on four. And then with 3.43 left... It becomes a four on three for the Ducks, which becomes a five on four, which the Hawks kill. But uh, just as it's done at 18:26, Kalorn scores from Leeson and Zellweger. Now, if you're a Ducks fan, a you were happy that it's three nothing after two, but b you were probably not very happy Leo Carlson got hurt in the second period. He just returned from a concussion. Uh, it wasn't a concussion, but still lower body injury. Think ankle, foot, knee, and so. We'll see how long he's going to be out, but he didn't return. Third period, uh, we get a fight between Vlasic and Strom. Uh, the Ducks had the only shot on net three and a half minutes in. Uh, Sligert has a one-timer that's held. Dostal, pretty sharp in this game. Easy to overlook because it's Chicago, but he was sharp. Uh, teams exchange rushes. There's a power play for the Ducks. That becomes a minute and 22 seconds of five on three. Well, you can't give them that long. Vetrano scores during the five on three. Fowler and Terry with the assists at 10-31. Uh, Vetrano's first 30-goal season in the National Hockey League, uh, and that was top shelf from the slot. The Hawks kill the 5-on-4. Things get pushed in a hold by Soderblom, and the Ducks end up holding on and getting that shutout, the Tony the Tiger magnet at the top and all that. So the Ducks go to 24-43-3 with the win with the loss, Chicago 19-46-5. Shots on net 13-7 Chicago in the first, 12-7 Anaheim in the second, 9-6 Chicago in the third. Final shots 29-25 Chicago, power plays Chicago 0-1. for Anaheim won for five. The hits 28 to 19 for Chicago. Soderblom saves 21 out of 25. Dostal 29 saves for the shutout. So it's a shutout. So there you go. All right. Next up, Montreal and Vancouver. So uh, this used to be one I was always scared of. Uh, two reasons. First off, it sounds like you're in Montreal because there's so many Montreal fans in the crowd. And secondly, um, Montreal used to own Vancouver in the regular season not that long ago either. 
So it's Montembeau versus DeSmith. Things get pushed on a hold by Casey DeSmith. Uh, the Habs press at two minutes. Suzuki has a tip shot that saved. In fact, the shots are three to one Montreal, three and a half minutes in. Uh, Mikheyev has a turnover chance. That's blocked. The Canucks draw a power play. That becomes a minute and six seconds of five on three. Everything's killed off. The Habs rush after it's done. The Canucks press with six and a half minutes left. And at 15.38, good forechecking by the Canucks, and especially by Elias Lindholm, sets this up. So Zadorov scores from Mikheyev and Lindholm with 3.18 left. The Canucks get a power play. That's killed off. But at 19.33, Zadorov gets the second goal of the first period from Mikheyev and Lafferty. He buries that one from the slot. So Mikheyev with a couple of assists in the first period. So it's 2-0 Vancouver after one. Second period, early press by the Canucks. There's a power play for the Habs. That's killed off. Uh, Zadorov has a near miss on a rush. Armia's robbed as the Habs press. The Habs then draw a power play. That's killed off. Things get pushed and a hold by Montembeau. Uh, power play for Montreal. There's a post for Caulfield. That's killed off. Uh, Canucks press with six minutes left. There's more pressure by the Canucks with four and a half minutes left. Uh, at 18-14 on a fast break, Garland makes it a 3-0 lead. He scores from Bluger. So there you go, they're up 3-0, but Montreal answers almost right away at 19.08, so less than a minute later. Slavkovsky, he scores from Caulfield, uh, so that makes it 3-1. And then Newhook, he has a buzzer beater that's saved, so Montreal not giving up. Uh, third period, early press by the Habs. Uh, they don't get shots out of it, though. There's a Canucks press at 2 minutes. 5 minutes in, the shots are 2-0 Canucks. They went into shutdown mode. They did a nice job. Uh, Canucks are forechecking really well. There's a shoulder save on Servard as the Habs press. Uh, Habs press again at the half. Zadorov then has a screenshot that's held. He had a lot of opportunities for the hat trick goal. He just couldn't get it. And then Amon scores. He gets a goal from Myers and Pod Colson at 11:44. I've been impressed with Pod Colson's effort in the bottom six too. He's showing some physicality. Uh, it's been nice to see. Makes it four to one. And then just yeah, the Canucks kind of shut him down from there. There wasn't much else to write. They win four to one. They go to 44, 18 and eight with the win. Keep pace with the Oilers as well. Uh, for Montreal, they're 25, 32, and 12 with the loss. Shots on that 12, 5 Vancouver in the first, 9, 6 Montreal in the second, 7 to 3 Edmonton, or Vancouver in the third. Now I get Edmonton on the brain. Final shots 25 to 17 for Vancouver. Power plays the Habs 0 for 4. The Canucks, or Habs 0 for 3, Canucks 0 for 4. Uh, hits 40 to 24 for Vancouver. So they were out hitting them and out shooting them. Uh, Montembeau saved 21 out of 25 into Smith. 16 saves on 17 shots. With every win they get with DeSmith in the net, with every game they play and they get points with DeSmith in the net, you get that much closer to Demko coming back. And it, it shows the players they can have some faith with DeSmith in the net as well. All right, next up, uh, Seattle and Vegas. So Grubauer versus Thompson. There's an early press by Vegas. The shots are one apiece at two and a half minutes. Schultz has a screenshot. That's held. There's a press by Seattle at five and a half minutes. Alexiak has a shot that deflects out. Barbashev has a one-timer that's held, and then Eichel buries one from the side of the net to open the scoring for Vegas. Marcia saw McNabb with the assists at 8-13. We get a power play for Vegas. That's killed off. One shot on that power play. There's a press by Vegas after it's done. Uh, they get more pressure with six minutes left, and they control it, really, after that one nothing goal. They just can't add to the lead. It's one nothing after one. Uh, second period, Eichel's denied on a rush. The crack and press at four minutes. The shots are even at two apiece, five and a half minutes in. Uh, Mantha has a rush chance that's saved. The Kraken press at six minutes. A net feed to Stevenson gets blocked out. There's a power play for Seattle. That leads to 19 seconds of four on four, which means it's a Vegas power play after. Everything's killed off there. Uh, the Kraken rush, they didn't allow a shot during that Vegas part of the power play. Uh, Eberle has a rush chance this blocker to side. 2.52 left. Vegas gets a power play. That leads to a shorthanded rush by McCann. That's held. Uh, Eichel's denied. The power play's killed off. Two shots on net during that. So it stays 1-0 Vegas after two. Third period. Uh, good early back and forth. McNabb is a blast that's held. The shots are 3-0 Vegas, a minute and a half in. Uh, we get a power play for the Kraken. That leads to a shorthanded 2-on-1 that gets broken up. They had another shorthanded rush right after that, did Vegas. Uh, McCann then fires one high when Seattle gets some zone time. That power play is killed off. Uh, seven minutes in, there's one shot for Seattle. They were stuck at one shot for a while in that period. Uh, Karche fires one wide on a rush. The Kraken then draw a power play and they score on it. It's Jaden Schwartz uh, deflecting in a point shot from Evans. Bjorkstrand with the other helper at 13:27, so that ties it at one. And then there was a post for Tolvin and on a turnover. It looked like Seattle might steal this one in Vegas. Uh, the Kraken, they press with four minutes left, but then Kolasar buries one from the side of the net after Howden did all the work to get there. Our Roy with the other assist at 18 minutes and 40 seconds puts Vegas back in the lead. 
Uh, there's an offside challenge. I don't know why they, they challenged it. I could tell right away. I was like, that's, that's onside. <clears throat> so Vegas comes out with the power play, and uh, they hit the empty net at 1950 for what is technically a power play goal. Stevenson from McNabb, because, uh, of course, Seattle pulls the goalie to get back to 5-on-5. Five five. So Vegas survives a bit of a scare tonight. They went 3-1. to one. They go to 37-25-7 and seven and maintain their pace ahead of St. Louis and the other teams behind them. Seattle drops to 28-28-12 with the loss. Shots on net, 12-6 Vegas in the first, 11-10 Vegas in the second, 14-5 Vegas in the third. They outshot Seattle 37-21. Power plays, Seattle 1-3, for three, Vegas 1-5. for five. The hits, 36-30 for Vegas. Grubauer continues to be very good this year. 34 saves on 36 shots. Now, ironically, they don't give him goal support. Uh, Thompson saved 20 out of 21 at the other end. All right, and last game to review for tonight is Tampa Bay and San Jose. And Tampa Bay played 20 good minutes tonight, and they get the win. So it's Vasilevsky versus Blackwood. There's an early power play for Tampa Bay. That's killed off. And then on their second shot, they score. It's Paul from Hedman and Kucherov at 451, and that one bounced off a stanchion. It was a weird bounce off the boards that came right out front of the net to Paul. Uh, Sharks look to respond, and eventually they do. Via a turnover on a two-on-one. Eklund scores from McDonald at 721. The, shark, the Sharks are ahead in shots, 5-2 to two halfway through the period. Easy for me to say. Uh, sharks press with six minutes left. We get a power play for San Jose with four seconds left, and it becomes four on four. So Tampa with the power play. That's killed off. It's 1-1 one, one after one. Second period, Dumba fires one high as the Bolts press. The Sharks press at two and a half minutes. Shots are 5-2 to two for San Jose, six and a half minutes in. Uh, Bolts press at seven and a half minutes. Kucherov to point. That gets picked off. Uh, Carpenters denied. Pucks cleared out after. 32 minutes into this game, Tampa Bay has eight shots on net against the Sharks. Uh, Tampa, they press with seven and a half minutes left. Point has a slot shot. That deflects out. Uh, we get two minutes of four on four. Kucherov has a tip shot. That saved. Lots of zone time for Tampa. They're just not getting shots. So they were controlling the play. But coming out of that second period, it's still tied at one. And they've only had 10 shots. Third period, a full Bolts power play to start it, and they score. 33 seconds in, it's point from Kucherov and Stamkos. He roofs a rebound in close. So I guess in between the second and third, they talked about it and made it work. Uh, Bolts press for another. The shots are 5-4 to four, Tampa at 5.5 minutes. At 6.50, Duclair, formerly a Shark, of course. Uh, he buries one on a 3-on-2 rush. Kucherov and point with the assists. Uh, we get a power play for San Jose. Barabanov to Cunning. That gets picked off. That power play is killed off. And then a 14-02 point scores from Kucherov to make it 4-1. Uh, with 140 left, the Sharks do end up getting themselves a power play. They do not score on it. Tampa Bay wins 4-1. They go to 38-25-6 on the season. With the loss, San Jose 16-46-7. Shots on net, 7-4 San Jose in the first. 9-6 San Jose in the second. 11 to 6 Tampa in the third. Final shots 22 to 21 San Jose. Power plays Tampa Bay 1 for 3. San Jose 0 for 3. Uh, hits 16 to 11 San Jose. Vasilevsky saves 21 out of 22. Uh, Blackwood saves 17 out of 21. Tampa Bay can't afford to do this against other teams. You play one good period against other teams, you normally will lose. San Jose just doesn't have the scoring power. Let me know your thoughts about these games in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.